The Chemist's Wife by Anton Chekhov. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to learn how to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Chemist's Wife by Anton Chekhov. The little town of B, consisting of two or three crooked streets, was sound asleep. There was a complete stillness in the motionless air. Nothing could be heard, but far away, outside the town, no doubt, the barking of a dog in a thin, hoarse tenor. It was close upon daybreak. Everything had long been asleep. The only person not asleep was the young wife of Chernomordic, qualified dispenser, who kept a chemist's shop at B., she had gone to bed and got up again three times, but could not sleep. She did not know why. She sat at the open window in her nightdress and looked into the street. She felt bored, depressed, vexed, so vexed that she felt quite inclined to cry. Again she did not know why. There had seemed to be a lump in her chest that kept rising into her throat. A few paces behind her, Chernomordic lay curled up close to the wall, snoring sweetly. A greedy flea was stabbing the bridge of his nose, but he did not feel it, and was positively smiling, for he was dreaming that every one in the town had a cough, and was buying from him the king of Denmark's cough drops. He could not have been awakened now by pinpricks, or by cannon, or by caresses. The chemist's shop was almost at the extreme end of the town, so the chemist's wife could see far into the fields. She could see the eastern horizon growing pale by degrees, then turning crimson, as though from a great fire. A big broad-faced moon peeped out unexpectedly from behind bushes in the distance. It was red. As a rule, when the moon emerges from behind bushes, it appears to be blushing. Suddenly, in the stillness of the night, there came the sounds of footsteps and a jingle of spurs. She could hear voices. That must be the officers going home to the camp from the police captains, thought the chemist's wife. Soon afterwards, two figures wearing officers' white tunics came into sight. One was big and tall, the other thinner and shorter. They slouched along by the fence, dragging one leg after the other and talking loudly together. As they passed the chemist's shop, they walked more slowly than ever and glanced up at the windows. It smells like a chemist, said the thin one. But so it is. Ah, I remember. I came here last week to buy some castor oil. There's a chemist here with a sour face and the jawbone of an ass. Such a jawbone, my dear fellow. It must have been a jawbone like that Samson killed the Philistines with. Yes, said the big one in a bass voice. The pharmacist is asleep, and his wife is asleep too. She is a pretty woman, Optiosov. I saw her. I liked her very much. Tell me, doctor, can she possibly love that jawbone of an ass? Can she? No, most likely she does not love him sighed the doctor, speaking as though he were sorry for the chemist. The little woman is asleep behind the window, Optiosov. What? Tossing with the heat, her little mouth half open, the one little foot hanging out of bed. I bet the fool chemist doesn't realize what a lucky fellow he is. No doubt he sees no difference between a woman and a bottle of carbolic. I say, doctor, said the officer, stopping. Let us go into the shop and buy something. Perhaps we shall see her. What an idea! In the night! What of it? They are obliged to serve one even at night. My dear fellow, let's go in. If you like. The chemist's wife, hiding behind the curtain, heard a muffled ring. Looking round at her husband, who was smiling and snoring sweetly as before, she drew on her dress slid her bare feet into her slippers, and ran to the shop. On the other side of the glass door she could see two shadows. 
the chemist's wife turned up the lamp and hurried to the door to open it and now she felt neither vexed nor bored nor inclined to cry though her heart was thumping the big doctor and the slender obtyosov walked in now she could get a view of them the doctor was corpulent and swarthy he wore a beard and was slow in his movements at the slightest motion his tunic seemed as though it would crack and perspiration came on to his face the officer was rosy clean-shaven feminine-looking and as supple as an english whip what may i give you asked the chemist's wife holding her dress across her bosom uh, give us uh, uh, four pennies worth of peppermint lozenges without haste the chemist's wife took down a jar from a shelf and began weighing out lozenges the customers stared fixedly at her back. The doctor screwed up his eyes like a well-fed cat, while the lieutenant was very grave. It's the first time I've seen a lady serving in a chemist's shop. There's nothing out of the way in it, replied the chemist's wife, looking out of the corner of her eye at the rosy-cheeked officer. My husband has no assistant, and I always help him. To be sure. You have a charming little shop, but a number of different uh, jars, and you are not afraid of moving about among the poisons. Ooh. The chemist's wife sealed up the parcel and handed it to the doctor. Obtyosov gave her the money. Half a minute of silence followed. The men exchanged glances, took a step towards the door, then looked at one another again. Will you give me two pennies worth of soda? said the doctor. Again the chemist's wife slowly and languidly raised her hand to the shelf. Haven't you in the shop anything such as... muttered Optyosov, moving his fingers. Something so, say, allegorical, revivifying. Seltzer water, for instance. Have you any seltzer water? Yes answered the chemist's wife. Bravo! You're a fairy, not a woman. Give us three bottles. The chemist's wife hurriedly sealed up the soda and vanished through the door into the darkness. A peach, said the doctor with a wink. You wouldn't find a pineapple like that in the island of Madeira, eh? What do you say? Do you hear the snoring, though? That's his worship, the chemist, enjoying sweet repose. A minute later the chemist's wife came back and set five bottles on the counter. She had just been in the cellar, and so was flushed and rather excited. Shh, quietly, said Optyosov when, after uncorking the bottles, she dropped the corkscrew. Don't make such a noise. You'll wake your husband. Well, what if I do wake him? He's sleeping sweetly. He must be dreaming of you. To your health. Besides, boomed the doctor, hiccuping after the seltzer water. Husbands are such a dull business that it would be very nice of them to be always asleep. How good a drop of red wine would be in this water. What an idea, laughed the chemist's wife. That would be splendid. What a pity they don't sell spirits in chemist shops, though you ought to sell wine as medicine. Have you any venum gallicum rubrum? Yes. Well, then, give us some. Bring it here, damn it. How much do you want? Quantum satis. Give us an ounce each in the water, and afterwards we'll see. Obtiosov, what do you say? First with water, and afterwards per se... The doctor and Obtyosov sat down to the counter, took off their caps, and began drinking the wine. Oh, the wine, one must admit, is wretched stuff. Venum nastissimum. Though in the presence of, uh, it tastes like nectar. You are enchanting, madam. In imagination, I kiss your hand. I would give a great deal to do so, not in the imagination said Optyosov. On my honor, I'd give my life. That's enough, 
said Madame Cherno Mordic, flushing and assuming a serious expression. What a flirt you are, though! The doctor laughed softly, looking slyly at her from under his brows. Your eyes seem to be firing sharp. Piff, piff. I congratulate you. You've conquered. We are vanquished. The chemist's wife looked at their ruddy faces, listened to their chatter, and soon she, too, grew quite lively. Oh, she felt so gay. She entered into the conversation. She laughed, flirted, and even, after repeated requests from the customers, drank two ounces of wine. You officers ought to come in oftener from the camp, she said. It's awful how dreary it is here. I'm simply dying of it. I should think so, said the doctor indignantly. Such a peach, a miracle of nature, thrown away in the wilds. How well Gribodyev said, into the wilds, to Saratov. It's time for us to be off, though. Delighted to have made your acquaintance. Very. How much do we owe you? The chemist's wife raised her eyes to the ceiling, and her lips moved for some time. Twelve rubles, forty-eight kopecks, she said. Optiosov took out of his pocket a fat pocketbook, and after fumbling for some time among the notes, paid. Your husband's sleeping sweetly. He must be dreaming, he muttered, pressing her hand in parting. I don't like to hear silly remarks. Uh, what silly remarks? On the contrary, it's not silly at all. Even Shakespeare said, Happy is he who in his youth is young. Let go of my hand. At last, after much talk and after kissing the lady's hand at parting, the customers went out of the shop irresolutely, as though they were wondering whether they had not forgotten something. She ran quickly into the bedroom and sat down in the same place. She saw the doctor and the officer on coming out of the shop walk lazily away a distance of twenty paces. Then they stopped and began whispering together. What about it? Her heart throbbed. There was a pulsing in her temples, and why she did not know. Her heart beat violently as though those two whispering outside were deciding her fate. Five minutes later the doctor parted from Optiosov and walked on, while Optiosov came back. He walked past the shop once, and a second time. He would stop near the door and then take a few steps again. At last the bell tinkled discreetly. What? Who is there? The chemist's wife heard her husband's voice suddenly. There's a ring at the bell, and don't you hear it? He said severely. Is that the way to do things? He got up, put on his dressing gown, and staggering, half asleep, flopped in his slippers to the shop. What is it? He asked Obtiosov. Give me... give me four pennies worth of peppermint lozenges. Sniffing continually, yawning, dropping asleep as he moved, and knocking his knees against the counter, the chemist went to the shelf and reached down the jar. Two minutes later the chemist's wife saw Obtiosov go out of the shop, and after he had gone some steps, she saw him throw the packet of peppermints in the dusty road. The doctor came from behind a corner to meet him. They met and, gesticulating, vanished in the morning mist. How unhappy I am, said the chemist's wife, looking angrily at her husband, who was undressing quickly to get into bed again. Oh, how unhappy I am, she repeated, suddenly melting into bitter tears. And nobody knows, nobody knows. Uh, I forgot fourpence on the counter muttered the chemist, pulling the quilt over him. Put it away in the till, please. And at once he fell to sleep again. End of The Chemist's Wife by Anton Chekhov This recording is in the public domain. Read by Alan Davis Drake and Jody Krangel.